The food you eat could be killing you slowly. Once you use these chemicals at the advanced stage of fruiting or ripening or harvesting stage, it is just introducing dosage of chemical. We are slowly poisoning our consumers and that is the reality. From the farm to the serving plate. The vegetables from the market have higher levels of microbe. They are more contaminated. Food. Everyone needs it. No one despises it. And no one survives without it. But what is the quality of food that you take in? And how can you be sure that what you eat is keeping you healthy and not killing you softly? My name is Joseph Opokugapo, and in this edition of Hotline Christian Poison on the Menu, I explore how the food you consume could be killing you slowly with or without your approval and knowledge. In fact, I was going to my village for a funeral. I come from Bunahafo region. I bought banana along the way and then we were in a taxi and I got to the village and I said, oh, I'll just eat banana. I ate it. I, I didn't feel anything, but by evening time, I started experiencing severe stomach pains and I was running. <laughs> And I said, ah, what is the, I was, so I thought I was thinking of that, I said, aha, the banana. And so when they broke, my um, brother-in-law had to take me to the um, clinic to get some medication for me. I had to make a stop over in Kumasi to visit my dad, and it was, it was terrible. Go to Accra, so for, for about three to four days, I was completely down. Honestly, we have to be careful. I mean, it, it is a very terrible situation. Just imagine that the other time too, I bought sweet pepper, put it down in the fridge. I hadn't used it. Only for a couple of days later, it had, you know, gotten spoiled. And let me use the, the, the language that the women use. It's melted. It's chemicals that people are putting because the people want to make money at all costs. So the vegetable must look beautiful, attractive. So you put them, you are killing people. Sometimes it gets more serious than this. As Dr. Doné Ameme of the School of Public Health at the University of Ghana explains, foodborne diseases could even cause organ failure and sometimes death. Sometimes you may get complications that relate to the kidney. Your kidney may fail. You may also have complications that relate to the joint, joint uh, problems. Sometimes brain and nervous tissue damage may occur as a result of foodborne illnesses. And ultimately, you may die. But usually, most of the foodborne illnesses resolve without uh, complications. Let's hear from another said victim. One evening after I closed from work, I just started to buy some bananas uh, because I didn't want to eat any heavy food. So I bought them, took them home. And then after I had this work, I sat by, ate them. And within a matter of about uh, 30 minutes, I started experiencing some... In fact, somebody said I had butterflies in my tummy. I, 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 it was very, very weird experience. My mom came in. I, we thought it was a normal stomach ache. I took some medicine, but still, the pain was so persistent. So we had to rush to the hospital. And when I went after the doctor conducting some series of tests, he told me I've taken poison. In reference to the banana that yes. you had taken? In fact, he asked me what I, what I ate that evening. I told him I ate banana. Then he told me, okay, then there is some poison in the banana you took. I asked, wow. So what they had to do was that they quickly had to give me activated charcoal to, to take so that I can vomit everything out. I did. They took some as sample to run some tests. They did and they realized the banana had some poisonous chemical substance in it. 
either it didn't ripe before they selling it out or they forced it to ripe thereby adding some something i hear it's garbage that they used to um, conserve the banana for it to ripe at its premature stage so that was probably the result of what i took the poison the garbage they used to force the banana to ripe at its premature stage cause or how do you call it made the, the fruits poisonous and then endangering the lives of people who like me who took that banana the doctor said if i delayed a little maybe i could have died out of it sometimes handlers of food deliberately and criminally contaminate them with poisonous chemicals to induce or delay ripening the FDA says regulating such foods is not easy. When we talk of the unprepackaged ones or the products that are not prepackaged, like powdered pepper, um, agushi powder, all those things that are sold on the market, vegetables, kobe, palm oil, they are very troublesome too because they are not prepackaged. So, really, regulating them is not so easy. I visit another search farm at Bregro in the eastern region. The farm sits beside stagnant brownish looking and muddy water which is used for irrigating the field. As these farmers admit, the water source is unhygienic and has been the source of fungus infestation that ends up destroying their fields. <laughs> This is the water we use to irrigate our crops. It is dirty water. It destroys our farms and the nursery. We attract pests to our farms from the irrigation water. It is bad. Cattle do work in the water and so they infest it with fungus. Then when we use it on our fields, the fungus infect it. They destroy our nursery when we use it to irrigate our fields. That causes the fungus, the fungus and the pests and diseases will attack the nursery so that you can use a uh, Maybe fungicide like red dome, fungula, and then you used to, to spray before the fungus will live at the distance, the best. Okay, and so the water that you use is what actually causes the fungus on the farms, is that what you're telling me? Yes. Why? The water that you use to water in the nursery. How come does it have fungus in it and, and then it ends up infecting you? Because food? the water is dead. It's not clean. Agri consultant with the Meridian Agricultural Services, Iron Atifa Ampofo, says there's a reason for which the use of said polluted water is common in vegetable production. They add to the nutritional value of the soil. It's not an assumption, it's a fact. Because once it rains and the water collects uphill, it washes a whole lot of nutrients into this valley bottom, which farmers can then depend on for their production. But the reality is that it's not only nutrients that are being washed into these valleys. There are other industrial ways that are coming into this drain. Sometimes fecal material coming into this drain and they come with pathogens. So as much as they are nutrients, there are also other elements that we need to worry our heads about. One other major but commonly underrated cause of food poisoning is the high level of pesticide residues in food. As these farmers in the Fantiaqua district of the eastern region tell me, there is no way their crops will survive without the application of chemicals because of constant pest attacks. These are some of the pests who destroy the crops. Mm. Mm. 
and I won't in one kitting kitchen book at Trevena and also no. Look at the pest. If you use chemicals on them, they don't die. There are a lot of hard working female farmers here. They say they don't like chemical application to food, but they don't exactly have a choice. They describe the chemicals they apply to the food as poison. Usually, the nematodes attack the roots of crops, making it impossible for them to absorb water, and so they die. Also, some whitish pests do attack the fields. We apply poison in the crops to prevent destruction. Let's look at lettuce, for example. It takes 12 weeks to mature between planting and harvest, but it's sprayed at least six times before they are harvested. These chemicals are strong and need to be applied under strict health and safety procedures with the most important of these standards being the duration between the last application of chemicals and harvest, as a Greek extension officer in the Fantiaqua district, Christian Zomelo, explains. As for pest, uh, pesticides, especially insecticide, using insecticide every two weeks you have to spray. Over the 12-week lifespan. Isn't that too much but, chemical for... But when it is almost nine weeks, then you stop your chemical uses so that you have at least 20, 12 to 21 days before you harvest so that all the pests, uh, all the uh, residual effects will break down. But he admits a lot of the farmers in the vicinity flout these standards and end up risking the lives of their consumers. Even some prefer spring, then the following day they go and harvest. Wisdom Coco, another farmer here, admits they don't always go by the strict procedures that are required in the application of these chemicals. At times, we are not watch us and by board do it to me. I say, we are not going to make me have a force. We say, we are not going to make me have a force. We say, we are not going to make me have a force. At times, the traders who come to buy the cabbage put pressure on farmers to harvest just a day after spraying the chemicals. They get upset if we do not allow that. The evidence of how powerful these chemicals are lies in the way farmers react to them when they apply them without the necessary protective clothing. Ernest Boabeng, popularly called Wafata, is a garden eggs, pepper and tomato farmer at Bregrom. We visit his one-acre farm. Dark in complexion and fairly short in height, he carries a sprayer on his back and in a black Wellington boot and a long sleeve shirt, spraying his field to destroy pests. The rain that comes in good in your mouth uh, and your nose. It brings you a uh, headache, pains, even pains, and you get uh, eyes problem. If we don't protect ourselves while spraying, it makes us ill and gives us problems. I'm unable to sleep at night. I get fever. I can't even breathe. My body itches. Then I get headache. I'm unable to go to work for three days. And in fact, in the home of rice farmer at Suchware, John Aoko Jiwanu, they lost a life thanks to the wrongful storage of chemicals. I lost a cancer doctor to insecticide. The farmer went to the farm, came back, and actually didn't keep store the, the remaining pesticides that he brought from the farm. So this little girl took it and uh, drank it and died. It became something that I have been pondering over and I was very, very, that girl could have been a lawyer or a doctor. And I was very saddened by that. But one way or the other, these chemicals find their way into the diet of many as a result of wrongful application and handling. As the study by Higanana Boro of the KNUSC Surgical Department reveals, a lot of these chemicals are in the diet you consume every day, usually above the permissible limits. At the end of the study, it was um, seen that 
most of the vegetables contained some um, traces of microbes, microbial residue, and then they also have various pesticide uh, residues. They have various residues in different ranges. During our program, we realized that most of the farmers were using the chemical containers for keeping salts in their kitchen. Some also were using it for water. And in the Jura, we have a lot of mosques there, mosques. So they were using it for their ablution, for praying and those things. And uh, it, it, it is dangerous. With the chemical container, even when it is, you triple rinse it, you put water inside, you shake it, and you pour it back into the spraying tank. If you do that for three times, and you, 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 you leave it there, it still has uh, some residues in it. It's still considered hazardous. Most of our tomato farmers think that the tomato, you can get the very red ripe tomato by spraying dietane on it a day before harvest. Dietane is a chemical and needs a certain number of days, if not weeks, to break down. To the farmer, it helps the tomato to attain that very red ripe status. So he puts it there. So most of us will go to the market, we'll pick tomato, and you see this yellowish powder on it. And sometimes I ask myself, how many of us really take time to wash this tomato before consuming it? Farmers misuse pesticides in at least seven different ways, including spraying too close to harvest, over dosage, and applying pesticides intended for cash crops like cocoa and cotton to the growing of food crops, some of which contain active ingredients that are unsafe for consumption. A recent report by the Northern Presbyterian Agricultural Services documents how in 2010 alone, 15 persons in the Upper East region died from suspected pesticide poisoning, according to the Regional Health Director for Health. Most of these deaths occurred due to poor storage of pesticides which seeped into food stocks. 118 others suffered poisoning from consuming food contaminated with pesticides in the Garu, Boku West and Talensi Nabdam district. Food consultant Irana Tefua attributes the situation to the fact that a lot of these farmers are illiterate and don't understand safety instruction. We have a huge problem because one between 30 to 70 percent of the farmers who are producing vegetables for us to consume are illiterate. The, the production context is changing. The, the factors that come into play are becoming complex. Um, with the coming or improvement in science, agrochemicals are not the simple agrochemicals that we used to know. And because of that, you need some minimal education or sensitization to be able to decipher between which product I should use at what time. There are lots of obsolete and expired chemicals on the market, some of which are being used on farms, thereby endangering food consumers and farming communities. I visit Kejetia in the Kumasi metropolis. Kejetia is a hub where you get all kinds of food to buy. It's also a hub where a lot of these chemicals are sold. Despite the strong nature of some of these chemicals, they are not sold under any regulated conditions. Some are sold on tabletops, some of them have inscriptions in foreign languages. Sadly, a lot of the sellers are uneducated, raising concerns about how they are able to properly advise their consumers on how to use these chemicals. Most of the people selling at the chemical stores, they don't, they are not qualified people. The chemical is poisonous and it's like machete. It can be used for both good and bad. So it is poisonous. You have to try and educate farmers on their use. A study by the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission in June 2010 at five markets in Accra found that 23.8% of the fruits on the market contain residues of insecticides 
like DDT above the accepted maximum residue limit. The report warned the continuous consumption of said foods could result in deadly chronic effects. In order to contain the problem of food contamination, there is a push for a ban on the application of chemicals to food production. Samuel Tamils is a farmer and the member of parliament for Commander Edina Eguafa Brim. My recommendation is we need to ban these things. We need to get to organic farming. And we shouldn't be, I mean, dependent so much on these things. Most of the advanced countries have banned all these we decide. But then they need to make money, so they send it to us. But the chemical sellers disagree. Believe you me, we are at this stage and we can't do without chemicals. He's worried about the presence of too many fake chemicals on the market. Most of the crop life member companies are complaining of their products being faked. People are using labels printing labels and putting on uh, printing labels of popular member companies and putting on other concussions and selling to farmers. And it is in the broad daylight. Everybody is seeing it. Uh, the regulators are saying we should have pesticide inspectors across the country. But unfortunately, um, either they are not enough or they are not there at all. But we are not seeing the effect of their inspection because it's a whole mess up there. Extension agent Christian Zomelo is advising that farmers do not jump into the use of chemical pesticides without the necessary consultation with plant experts, even when their farms are attacked by pests. We are advising that whatever they see on the food, they should uh, inform the Ministry of Agriculture, Department of Agriculture, and then they take sample to them, preferably the plant doctors, so that they can actually do diagnosis and then make prescription for them. Yes, not just to go to the uh, store and buy whatever chemical, no, but at least as we've been going to the hospital, when you see a doctor, he will give you the treatment and then the prescription prescription so that you go and buy what is actually uh, needed to cure that particular disease.